recording. Alright, so that's starting. Okay. Alright, so um, this starts out at an uh, introduction to TCPIP. Um, some of this stuff um, should be familiar to you. Um, so the objectives we're going to be looking at uh, the perspective of networking and we're going to look at the TCPIP module and the data encapsulation terminology. So um, when we talk about uh, um, networking, there are really two major things in terms of how people get connected to a network. Is either they're going to be connected by a cable or they're going to be connected by a wireless. It, it, it's, it's one of those two. So that's what this slide is showing, that there are really two options for persons to connect. If it's cable, then they would have been connecting through some switch and then that uh, from that it connects into a wall outlet um, and that wall outlet then gets them connection to the rest of the network. Uh, if it is wireless, then they connect to some wireless device, could be an access point or a wireless router and that is going to have a wired section as well that connects into a wall outlet that connects to the rest of the network. Now this is really looking at things from the point of view of a, a business and not so much home. Because I mean in, in home we might not have the connect to wall outlet situation. Oh well I like oh, we can't get to your thing on full screen. Um let me see. So now when we look on my one, we can't get full screen, I won't get your one on full screen. So I see a full screen here. Um, I don't know if that works for you. We will find out. Just do you what I'm saying? Um, so uh, over the right side here, where it says with yeah. these three dots, and more options when I click on it, I see full screen. Okay, good. All right, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so um, this is kind of a historical look at networking. Um, in the very early days of networking, what you had are some major um, vendors. Uh, um, and those vendors, their networks were um, were closed. In other words, you, you couldn't use an IBM computer and connect to uh, another vendor's computer. So the, the two major vendors that existed back then was um, IBM and a company called DEC, which is Digital Electronics Corporation. Uh, this company was actually um, sold and it was the one that was converted to Hewlett Packard. So all of their computers had to be connected, an IBM computer had to be connected to another IBM computer. And if you had a DECnet computer, they had to connect to other DEC computers. Um, there was uh, um, gateways that you could use now to connect between your IBM network and a DEC network. Right? Um, but you couldn't connect a DEC computer to an IBM computer. You had to use a gateway to connect between the two networks. So networks back then were closed. Uh, at some point, the TCPIP became a really big thing and uh, all um, companies begin to adopt TCPIP. So it's not that TCPIP didn't exist before, you know, but they didn't want to adopt it. You know? So by the 90s now, everybody started to adopt TCPIP as a universal method to communicate on a data network. So what you find happening now is that um, some IBM computers still have their proprietary connection 
and some deck computers still had their proprietary connection. But they did now have the ability to use TCPIP. So in order to connect to others, they could actually use TCPIP. Now, um, as we get closer to the 2000s, everybody started using TCPIP. So all the proprietary connections were just um, done away with. So this is where we are now, where everybody uses TCPIP. So it doesn't matter whose product you have, you have a Cisco product, you can connect to a Microsoft product, you can connect to Juniper, and they all can talk because they're all using TCPIP. Now the TCPIP model um, started out with uh, the application layer, so it was a four layer model, right? application and uh, this section that is called transport very often you will see it listed as host to host okay? so application then host to host then the internet layer and then uh, the link layer so this link layer um, represented uh, the data link and the physical link from the OSI model now, some persons begin to see the TCPIP model um, as a, 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 like an, a new way of looking at it. And so, instead of saying internet, they say network, because the internet layer corresponds to the network layer of the OSI model. And then uh, the link layer uh, corresponds to the data link of the OSI model and the physical of the OSI model. So looking at it this way, you know, we kind of see the TCPIP model as a, a five-layer model rather than a four-layer model, where we know about application, transport, network, data link, and physical. All right. So here we're getting some examples of protocols that are used at the different layers. So the application layer. Uh, we see things like HTTP, which is used for web access, POP3, which is used for email access, and SMTP, which is used for email access as well. Right? So both POP3 and SMTP are used for email. They are a little different in that um, POP3 is only used for um, server-to-client communication. So an email client, as in our computer or our mobile phone, um, getting the email from the um, email server. We, we can use POP3 for that. Um, however, SMTP which is much more robust. SMTP can be used as communication between two servers, two email servers, as well as it can be used to I'm um, saying the email from the server to the client. Then the, at the transport layer, we have TCP and UDP, and the TCP is reliable, UDP unreliable. Then at the internet layer, we have IP and ICMP. So IP is what is used to deliver the data from one computer to another. ICMP is used to provide messages. So, like when you do ping, those messages that you get back, the, the reply or request time, out, all of those messages are delivered by ICMP. ICMP, an internet control message protocol. So, its job is just to deliver messages. Then we have the data link and physical layer. So at that layer, what we have is Ethernet um, and wireless. And so those two technologies exist at the data link layer. So, Lyle. Yeah. Fiber. Uh, well, the thing is, when you say fiber, fiber is just actually the, the, the physical um, right. device. So um, on fiber, we could actually have Ethernet. Okay. Yeah, Ethernet signal could be going over, even though it's light, but light is actually just carrying Ethernet. 
Yeah, Kawan is current, Kawan is right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, in this case here, where we were talking about the protocol and not so much the physical medium. Physical. Yeah, I realize, I realize that. Right. Okay. All right. So here we're just taking a, a basic look at how networking would work if we're sending a we're using the web. Right. So um, on the right side is a computer um, with a, with a web browser, and on the left side is a web server. So um, they have given the name. The computer is called Bob. So basically, we're saying the user Bob is at the computer, and we're giving the, the server a name Larry. So when 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 we at our computer open up our web page and we type up, um, they say Yahoo.com or Google.com, what we're actually saying to the web server is we are asking the web server to give us a copy of their web page. So that's what is happening here. It says, give me your web page. And then the server will respond by providing a copy of the home page. And um, because it's usually HTML, so it has the, the extension not HTML. So that's what happens when we access a, a, a website. Right? Our computer, through its browser, asks for a copy of the web page, and the server delivers that copy of the web page. So here are some further detail on, on how that uh, access happens. So when the browser makes a copy, makes a request for a copy of the web page, it actually sends up a specific message called a HTTP GET. So that GET message asks for the home page. Um, the, the server will then provide a copy. But before the server provides a copy, the server um, provides an acknowledgement that it has received the request. That acknowledgement is called a OK. Right? Um, in fact, it's called a 200 OK. So typically, when you see it, you'll see 200, then OK. So this is like an acknowledgement to say, yes, I recognize that you're asking for a copy of the web page. So it sends a 200 OK, and then after that, it actually sends the web page. So the web page is sent as a form of data. So we have our HTTP GET request, which is what we see up here. We have the HTTP reply, which is what comes back as the acknowledgement, and then um, one data on the message. So the next message is just the data. All right. So continuing with that. And, and when we do a uh, uh, web traffic, we're actually using HTTP. HTTP uses TCP at the transport layer, which now means that we're going to have a reliable um, communication, which will have sequence numbers and acknowledgement. So um, the, 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 the Web server, sorry, the, the computer through its web browser, when it um, receives the information from the server, the information will be broken out into further detail right here. Now, this information here is the same thing that we were looking at over the previous page, but it's just that we're breaking it out now to show you the detail of what is actually contained in that information. Right? So it has a sequence number, then we have the OK, and then the actual web page. So the sequence number is how the web server is numbering each packet that it sends, right? or each TCP segment. Right? So the first one, sequence number one. Then the second set of information has sequence number two, and then the data. Then the next one has sequence number three and the data. Now, 
we are looking at a situation here where we are saying this, the second packet had, had an error somewhere on the network on, on that packet, even though it was sent by the server, it didn't get to the client. Right? So it was lost somewhere along the line. So the client needs to provide acknowledgement to say what it has received. So in this case, um, the client would send an acknowledgement. So this what we're looking at is an acknowledgement. So the acknowledgement is saying, I have received everything except two. So um, resend um, segment number two. Okay. So this is how TCP um, is able to be reliable because the client um, has the ability of indicating to the server um, which packets or which segments it does not receive. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, what we've been looking at here is how the communication takes place uh, um, across the network. Um, we start so, by talking about the TCP/IP model, and uh, um, the TCP/IP model is going to be um, on both computers, so both the client and the server. Right? So what's going to happen is uh, um, the, the same layer on each device is going to be talking. So to, to clarify that, I'm going to go back up to where we had the, the model, like here. So when we're looking at the information going across, we're looking at the transport layer. So the two transport layer, transport layer on the server and transport layer on the client are talking. Right? And, and that's how the communication takes place. Um, you have the, the same layer communication. So application layer talks to application layer. Transport layer talks to transport layer. Internet layer talks to internet layer. And data link layer talks to the data link layer. And that's how they do it on the um, devices as they communicate, right? So that's where we call we say same layer communication. The next thing that happens is there's also communication on each device um, among the different layers. So, for example, the application layer um, doesn't have the ability to do the reliability function. So the application layer will ask the transport layer to do that for it. So each layer that is at top asks the next layer below to carry out some functions for it. So the application layer asks the transport layer to carry out the, the reliability function. The transport layer will ask the internet layer to do the delivery function because only the internet layer does the delivery of data. And the internet layer will ask the, the link layer to deal with the framing functions, to, to put the information in a frame where you have a header and a trailer. So with that said, we go back to uh, this slide. So same layer interaction, which is where the transport layer talks to the transport layer. Um, with, um, the server and the client. And then the adjacent layer interaction is where we have the application layer asking the transport layer to carry out some functions and the transport layer asking the internet layer to carry out some functions. So if we read what is inside here, it says on a single computer, one low layer provides a service to the layer above. So the, the transport layer provides service to the application layer. The service that the transport layer provides is reliability. And then the internet layer provides a, a service to the transport layer. The service that the internet layer is providing is data delivery. Okay, so like this just has to do with the, the, um, the client and the server. Correct. Nothing to do with the OSI model and TCP model. Well, it, yeah, man, it's, it's part of the OSI model and the TCP IP model. So that's how the, the models are designed 
to ensure okay. that uh, each layer talks to the same layer on the other side. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, here we're looking at um, a, a broad view of the network and trying to just paint a picture of how data moves through a network without going into the, the nitty gritty and the technical details, right? Just looking at it up broadly. And um, one of the ways to do that is to compare the data network to a postal service network. Right? So where you deliver your your mail right? like like all your um, utility bills will be deliver, delivered to your home uh, or if you send a mail like a, a post off a mail to somebody. Right? So we're comparing here the data network to the postal service. So um, right here, this is somebody's home. This is their, their mailbox, you know, the little mailbox that you have at your gate. Yeah. So the assumption here is that you put a mail inside there and the postman would come and, and collect that mail. Yeah. So the postman would come and take out the mail out of your, your um, mailbox and then the postman would uh, carry that mail to um, his office. Um, and then from his office, that mail is going to be um, sorted. So when they look at it, they, they look at the, the delivery address where it should go to. Um, let's say, well, as they say in this, as, as it is said in this thing here, it's need to go to California. Now, um, let's say we are in Jamaica and we're posting off a, a, meta, a, a letter to go to California. So when the postman collects that and takes it to the post office, the post office is going to sort it and they, at that office, when we are, the postman don't need to know um, how California is set up. They don't need to know the actual street address in California. They don't need to know anything like that. They just need to know that this needs to go to California, which is outside of Jamaica, so they need to get it to the central sorting office. Right? So all they do is just um, give it to someone to deliver to the central sorting office. So uh, let's say this is the central sorting office, so you know, get to the central sorting office. The central sorting office says, okay, um, this is to go overseas, so since it is to go overseas, we know that we don't have to deliver it to any other local post office. What we need to do is to get it to the custom section. Right, where things are sent overseas, so they set it, send it to the custom. Then custom now is going to take that. Again, custom don't need to know exactly where California is. Custom just need, need to know that it is outside of Jamaica. So custom say, okay, since this is California, let's give it to the plane at the airport. So they give it to the plane at the airport. Okay. Um, that plane now will deliver to the U.S. And then in the U.S. now, it gets to the postal service in the U.S. And they now are the ones that really need to know how to find the street address in California. And then they finally deliver it. Follow that process? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so if we compare this now to what happens in the network, it's the same thing. Um, when we are here sending off an email, which is going to go through the data network now, we don't need to know the final destination. So um, I don't need to know, so if I'm sending you an email, I don't need to know exactly where your computer is. I don't need to know the IP address of your computer. I just send the email. Now it's going to come to my um, modem. My modem now will send it to the service provider. The service provider now would then look at the email address um, and send it to the email um, server. The email server would then deliver that to the, your service provider. 
and your service provider knows whichever um, of their central office you are connected to. And so they send it there, and then from that central office, it is sent to you. Okay. Notice along the way, none of these entities need to know the final destination. They just need to know who should I send it to next. Okay? Yes. Right. So that's the concept of networking, that at no time you need to know exactly where the final destination is. You just need to know where should it go next. And then you just send, give it to the next place and that next place will take care of it. Alright, so we are breaking this down now, getting even deeper into the networking. So rather than look at these cases like service provider and thing, I want to say, let's say these are all routers. So now we need to move something from Bob to get to the server, but it has to go through some routers. Now each device will need to have IP address. So um, the server needs to have an IP address. Um, this client needs to have IP address and this client needs to have IP address. So those are things that will need to be configured. Right. So um, looking even deeper now, so we have seen where we, we have given the, the client an IP address and we have given the server an IP address. And then, so when, when um, well in this case we're looking at the server um, responding. So the server is sending the message to get to the client. The first thing that happens, the server is going to create a, 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 a TCP segment. So that TCP segment has the IP address inside of it. So we have the destination IP address, the source IP address. Um, it has the TCP section which is going to deal with the reliability and the HTTP is the actual information. So based on this, the server says, well, I need to get it over to 2.2.2.2, but I don't know how to find that place. So all I need to know is that I should just send it to R1, right? which would be like the default gateway of the server. So as long as the server has something to deliver, and the server don't know exactly where, the server does deliver it to its default gateway, which is the router, and the router will take care of it from there. So when it gets to the router, the router will have a routing table. The router will consult its routing table, and based on the destination address, the router says, okay, I can either send this to router 3 or router 2, but I need to choose the best path. In this case, router 2 is the best path. Because if I send it to router 3, router 3 will still have to go over to router 2. So the router now choose the best path and send it to router 2. Router 2 now, which has direct connection to the server, is able, sorry, direct connection to the client, is able to just deliver it locally. Make sense? Yes, and you would leave out the switch or the cloud or anything just for clarity, right? Yes, correct. For clarity and simplicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going a little deeper now. Right? So each side is taking it a little deeper. Um, the well, I just want to go up a little bit. So right now we're looking at right here, just, just this link right here, right? Between the server and, and the first router, that's where we're looking at. Right? So that's it. Between the server and the first router, that, that link. So um, that packet, when it gets down to the Ethernet section, right? So Ethernet is going to put on its own header. Right, so you know an Ethernet header and an Ethernet trailer. And inside of that is the IP packet that has the information that is to be delivered. This process is called encapsulation. 
So on, on the sending side, we get encapsulation. Right? Now, as that goes over to the router, the router would need to do the decapsulation process. Right? Now, some, some, some books will have the term de-encapsulation. So whichever one, it's same meaning. Decapsulate or de-encapsulate. Right? So it gets it at layer 2, but what it needs to do is to actually collect the actual data. So it's going to strip off the layer 2 information. So it takes off the Ethernet header and it takes off the Ethernet trailer and gets just the IP information. And the IP information is where router 1 can actually see you now the source IP address and the destination IP address. So um, this is showing us the, the process. So uh, coming from the server, we initially would have had the data. Then it goes to the TCP section where TCP adds its own header, and this is the data section. Then when it comes on to the internet layer, where we have IP. Mm -hmm. The internet layer is going to take all of this, the TCP header and the data, and treat all of that as the, the, the information that is to be delivered, and then attaches the IP header. Then when it goes down to the data link layer, the data link layer is going to treat all of this, the IP, TCP, and data as the information that is to be delivered, and then it's going to add the data link header and the data link trailer. Then when it goes on to layer 1, it converts everything to just bits. Right. So this is the encapsulation process. Alright, so this is just kind of um, simplifying it at the transport layer. We have segment, so we would call it a segment. At the internet layer, we will have IP, we call it the packet. And at the data link layer, we call it the frame. Right, so they haven't listed the, the, the physical layer. Physical layer, we just call it bits. Right, so we have frame, packet, sorry, segment, packet, frame, bits. All right, um, comparing the different models, so we see OSI model, TCP IP model, and the new way of looking at the TCP IP model. Right? So notice the OSI model is seven layers. TCP IP model originally four layers. The new way of looking at it, five layers. But they all correspond in some way. Right. So for OSI model, application, presentation, and session correspond to just the application layer in the TCP IP model, whether the new one or the old one. Right. It's just called application. The transport layer of the OSI model corresponds to the transport layer of the TCP IP model, whether the old one or the new one. Just note that in some books, for the TCP IP model, this is going to be called the host to host. For the OSI model, the network layer is called the internet layer on the TCP IP model. The new way of looking at the TCP IP model, we just call it network as well. Then for the OSI model, the data link layer and the physical layer correspond to the link layer in the TCP IP model. The new way of looking at the TCP IP model, we break out the, the two layers, so we have our data link and physical. So um, while there are different models, but they, they, they have some corresponding sections. See that? Yeah, yes. Okay, good, good. Right. Now this is just some um, further detail on the OSI model and um, if you have a difficulty remembering it, um, there is this 
acronym that we use, all people seem to need data processing. Right? And that allows us to remember um, application, presentation, um, session, then um, transport, network, data link, processing. All people seem to need data processing. That just helps us to, help us to remember the, the layers of the OSI model. From the application end. Yeah, starting at the application end. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, this is for the comparison, right? The OSI model. Um, the top three layers, layer five to seven, which is session, presentation, application. Um, we would see things like Telnet, HTTP, FTP, SMTP, Optree, VoIP, and SNMP. Now, um, if we were really looking at the OSI model, um, we would have to break these out because not all of these uh, would have a session in them. Right? So, but because we are really just kind of concentrating on the TCPIP model, so that's why we just group these top three together. Right? As we would have seen here, right? the, the top three. What the, the pop, is the pop three mean? Pop three is post office protocol. Yeah, where does three, where does three come from? Version three. Oh, version, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So, post office version 3, post office protocol version 3. I, I think there's actually a version 4, you know, but um, most, most, most of the times it's really version 3, you see. All right, so what devices would function at, at this layer? Um, host, as in individual computers and firewalls. At the transport layer, which is layer 4 of the OSI model, uh, we have TCP and UDP. Um, at this layer, host and firewalls operate at this layer as well. Uh, network layer, which is IP, then at this layer we have routers. So routers function at the network layer. And at layer 2, we have um, the protocol that we see is Ethernet. Um, there's also HDLC. Or HDLC, we might not have he heard about very often, but um, this is something that happens on the wide area side. Okay. So if we're doing things like um, dialog, then we would actually use HDLC. If we're using things like frame relay, use HDLC. So it's, it's really on the wide area side. So the devices that function there are like switches, wireless router, or cable modem, or DSL modem, and so on. Then at layer 1, this is now where we would have the RJ45 connector. We would have Ethernet, as in the Ethernet protocol actually operates at layer, layer 1 as well. Now, here we could actually see as well things like our fiber cable. Right? So, it may not listed here, but fiber would fall at this section in um, layer 1 as well. And then over on the right side, the devices, hubs, repeaters, and cables. The, well, the 802.3 is for the wireless? No, 802.3 is actually Ethernet. Ethernet, okay. Yeah. So this is the, the IEEE standard for Ethernet. Okay. Yeah. All right, so coming back to encapsulation protocol. Well, this time we're looking at the... OSI model. So at layer 7, um, the PDU, PDU is protocol data unit. So we're saying this is the unit of data that exists. Right? Um, so we would have a layer 7 header, 
when that goes down, so the information is being encapsulated, which means it's, it's being transmitted. Right? And if it's being transmitted, it starts from the application layer and goes down. Right? So when it gets to layer 6, layer 6 is going to take everything from the layer 7 right? and treat it as data. So notice it takes this and this and treat all of that as data. And then it adds the layer 6 header. Layer 5, which is our session, is going to now treat everything from layer 6 as data. So it takes the layer 6 header, the layer 6 data, and all of that now is treated as data. Then when it comes on to layer 4, layer 4 takes the layer 5 header and all this data section and treats it as data. Right? And then, of course, it adds it layer 4 header. At layer 3, which is now our network layer, um, it takes everything from layer 4 um, and treats that as data, both the layer 4 header and the data. A layer 2, which is the um, data link layer, it takes all of what is at layer 3 and treats it as data. Now, layer 2 is the only layer that adds a trailer. Right? Every layer Every other layer add a header, but layer 2 add a trailer and a header. So this is the header over here, and this is the trailer. Make sense? Yes. Okay. All right, so... Um, well, I think this is the end of this slide part. Alright. Um, Alright, so everything making sense so far? Alright, so we uh, can close out of this one and go to the next one. This is chapter 2. So here we're going to be looking at Internet Fundamentals. Objectives, overview of the LAN, building physical Internet LANs with UTP, as in an un unshielded twisted pair, building physical Internet LANs with fiber, and sending data in Internet networks. Internet networks. So, um, SOHO means small office, home office. We use this term really to um, identify small networks, networks that we have at home or networks that are found in um, very small businesses. So, we use the term SOHO, small office, home office. So what we're looking at here is a SOHO network, right? One router, one switch, and then we have computers and printers and so on. Another example of a SOHO network, in this case we are supporting wireless. So we have a wireless access point here, so we could now connect um, our mobile phones and our tablets. All right, so now we're looking at the enterprise. So this is a um, business. Right? So the network is a little larger now, more devices. Right? So um, notice we have three floors. Th first floor, second floor, third floor. Right? Um, so at the third floor, we have computers and tablets and so on, wireless devices connecting into a switch. That goes down to uh, a switch um, that is uh, um, this. This is like our backbone switch. Okay. And then of course, yeah. yeah. As it is on the first floor, that's how it will be in a rack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are likely to be in a rack. Okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah, each floor would would have a rack. And then mm -hmm. these would be in the rack. Right. 
And then of course now, um, let's say we have like two buildings on, on the compound, then we would, we would connect from the backbone on one building into a router, and that then connects over to the rest of the network. Alright, so the different types of protocols that we'll see in the network um, and, and speeds. Uh, if we're looking at 10 megabits per second, um, the common name for 10 megabits per second is Ethernet. Uh, 10 megabits per second, the IEEE standard is 10 base T. The actual name of the standard is 802.3. This type of um, network uses twisted pair cable and it has a maximum segment length of 100 meters before we have to use another switch or hub. Right? And under 100 megabits per second, we have uh, um, the common name for that is fast Ethernet. Right? So if it's 100 megabits per second, you can't. Before you move on, right, I'm there. Copper is the same as the, the um, SWA25 wires? Uh, well, it doesn't have to be SWA25, um, any twisted pair. But when it, which one is the SWA25? Finest one. Oh, mm, yeah, it doesn't have to be. But guess what happened now? You see those in terms of the, the finer thickness of the wire, that's where we talk about the, the grade of the wire. And those are yeah. measured as in AWG. So you have AWG sorry, 20. Sorry, sorry, no, I'm going to mix up. I'm going to mix it up. Okay. It's not like a steel wire arm of electrical or something like that. You have two knowledge, I'm going to mix it up. Okay, okay. It's American wire gear, AWG, right? Right, right. Okay, okay. All right, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so. The LX, the LX, I understand the T is twisted. What LX? Uh, oh, the, the, the LX is. Uh, um, when you're using fiber, right? Oh. Yeah. So the the L is for long. So if you look over to the right, you see the, the distance is five thousand meters. It's over three miles, huh? Yeah. Right. So, and, and, and note, for each speed, they have different names, right? So, for the 1000, one it's called Gigabit Ethernet, right? Um, and the, the standard name, 1000 one Base LX, uh, is actually the, the standard designation is 802.3Z. And, um, to use copper, it would be 802.3 AB, and um, if we go multi gigabits now, 10 gigabits per second, it's a 10 gig internet. Sometimes you just see this written as multi gigabit instead of saying 10 gig internet. And the um, informal name 10 G base T. And um, the standard name 802.3AN. So pretty much it's the same distance all of them except the fiber. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. As you know, fiber allows for longer transmission. Yes. Alright, so because we're looking at LAN now, in this case here, you notice we don't have any routers in there, so it's just switches. So notice here that we have this distance being 200 meters and this one being one kilometer. And of course, notice it's fiber. So, because it's fiber, we can have the distance being so much longer. So, from our PC, um, 
the PC is sending along the, the, the wire here and along the wire it's sending the Ethernet frame. So we have the Ethernet header, the data and the Ethernet trailer. That gets to the switch here. Then it goes out over the, the fiber, gets to another switch, goes from that switch over fiber to the third switch, and then finally is delivered to the next computer. Um, that computer gets the Ethernet frame, with the Ethernet header, the data, and the, the Ethernet trader. Now we're going to break this out um, into further detail as we go along. Now, um, when you're transmitting with over over any medium, and and uh, you would know this as well because you're in electricity, so that's one of the things that is well known that you cannot transmit on one wire. You actually need two wire. You need you need to send and you need a return. Yes. Right. So basically, that's what we're showing here, right? one wire in the pair so it travels and if you follow follow the, the, the arrow so it will be going in one direction and then you know, return so this this is what um one of the basic concepts of how electricity work that uh, as surprisingly a lot of person miss miss it right that you, you must have uh, uh, a transmission medium and you must have a return. Right, so here we're showing the um, the same cable now, but now we're saying this cable uh, must have some specific connectors at the end, and in this case we're using our RJ45 connectors. So these connectors connect into the RJ45 ports on the device. So our computers will have our RJ45 port and the cable will have our RJ45 connector. And we're showing examples here. So the connector and the ports on the switch and in the network card that is inside the computer. Now, if we were using, say, fiber, then uh, that uh, connector might look different. And in this case, we're seeing what is called the SFP, which is Small Form Factor Pluggable. Right? So that's what SFP means, Small Form Factor Pluggable. Right? So this is our fiber cable, and the fiber cable goes into the SFP and the SFP now plugs into the RJ45 port. Now, with fiber, the concept um, of uh, the, the one wire is most visible because now the, the fiber um, cable will actually have two separate cable that is used, one for transmission and one for receive. Right? So we actually don't have two wires for two separate cables now. While with, with the twisted pair we have one cable with two wires in it. Y you follow that difference? Yes, yes, yes I do. Right. And I, you, you've worked with fiber, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's what I did, sir. <laughs> right, right. So you you know this thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So basically, what we're saying here you now, we have one fiber, and and notice we just have a transmit, right? So there is no return. Okay. And then down at the other side, you now you have the the other end that would deal with the return. See it? Yes, I do. All right, so in terms of our twisted pair now, our RJ45, um, for Ethernet, we actually only need four wires, right? And the, the four wires that are inside the cable 
uh, need to be connected to pins 1, 2, 3, and 6. So, 1 connect to 1, 2 connect to 2, 3 connect to 3, and 6 connect to 6. So, this is what we would call a straight through cable where the, the numbers are lined up 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, 6 to 6. So, well, no, no, before you move on, go yeah. on, go on with the next stuff here. All right, um, this is the actual thing, this is just a way to explain it because my recollection, the, the pin three and four and five would be the the one that left out to be like the straight cable. Four, five, those pin will be in the center. Um, it will be in the center, rather. You mean four and five? Yeah, yeah. Would be one and two. Or, I don't know. This, this oh, 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 oh. I, I, I follow. I follow what you say. Mm. <laughs> All right. So that that thing is it has gotten so so complicated. Um, way more than it should have been. Uh, now okay. here the issue. The, there is a counting method that is used by telecom people, which is mm -hmm. different from the counting method used by data engineers. Right? Okay, okay. Now in telecom, we learn that we count from in the center. We say one, two, then three, mm -hmm. four, and then mm -hmm. five and six, and then seven and eight. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we started out doing it. But they, when the data people get into the mix, they didn't bother with that. They just say, you know, we just going to start from one end and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the, the only time it really comes down to we still saying one and two in the center is when you're looking at a, like a, a RJ11. We still would, awesome. would, 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 would hold true to that old counting method. Okay, okay. Yeah, but when you're talking about a data cable, a RJ45, we, we don't worry with that anymore. Okay. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> good, good, good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, when, when, when um, you get two different set of engineer and, and each one of the own yeah. concept. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right. So, um, this is looking at the straight through cable again, right? But um, notice here at the computer, the transmit pins are one and two. Over the switch, the trans the receive pins are actually one and two. And that is why. Um, when you're connecting a, 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 a computer to a switch, you don't need a crossover cable. Right? Because the switch has done an internal cross. So what the switch has done internally is put its receive um, circuit on pin 1 and 2 and its transmit circuit on pin 3 and 6. That then ensures that the transmit coming from the computer goes to the receive on the switch. Right? Because we cannot have a complete circuit unless transmit connects directly to receive. If we have a case where transmit goes to transmit, we have um, a, a communication failure. Make sense? Yes, that will come a clashing up thing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So the switches, switches now are designed so that internally the switch actually cross the circuit. So that when you use a straight through cable from the computer, the transmit pair will, will connect to the receive pair in the switch. Now if you have two computers, the computers don't do the internal crossing. And therefore, to connect two computers, we're going to need a crossover cable. So we have to do the crossing on the cable in that uh, in that case. You okay? 
Yes. So here is showing, you know, in, in, in this case, is two switches. So since each switch already going across inside, the only way for us to connect two switches and, and get transmit to receive, we have to now cross the cable itself. Is it? Yes, yes. Right. Because, because now each switch is going to have the receive and one and two. So if we use a straight through cable, we're going to have the, the clashing that you spoke about. We're going to have the transmit going to a transmit. So we have to cross the cable. Now crossing the cable means we're going to take pin 1 and send it to pin 3. And take pin 2 and send it to pin 6. And then pin 3 goes to pin 1. Pin 6 goes to pin 2. And that's the crossing. Right. Now, something I want to mention here that this kind of connection that we're talking about where we only use four wires only works for 10 megabits and 100 megabits. Only with those two speeds that we can use four wires. Anytime we go into the gigabit range, we have to use all eight wires. Alright, so here we're pointing out the different places where we use either straight through or crossover. So um, from a computer to a switch, we're going to use straight through. From one switch to another switch, we need crossover cable. And then from a switch to a computer, we need straight through cable. Alright, so in this case now we're looking at, uh, notice it says 1000 base T, so this 1000 is, is where we get into the gigabits. So in the case of gigabit, we cannot use just four wires, we need all eight. So see we're showing uh, one pair, two pair, three pair, four pairs, so we need all eight wires. So it says four pairs straight through cable. Alright, so looking at fiber, um, so the fiber um, of our core and the cladding and the buffer and strengthener, depending on the fiber, we may have or not have the strengthener and then the outer jacket. Now these are things you already know as a, as a fiber engineer, so we don't have to spend too much time on this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I can even skip this part here as well. You, you should be comfortable with this. Yeah, man, I can pass, man. Yeah. Uh, I figure this as well. Alright, so sampling of the IEEE 802.3 10 gigabits fiber. Alright, so let's looking at the different um, fiber standards. So we have 10 gigabit 10 G base S which is used for multi-mode, uh, as a um, maximum distance 400 meters. There's a 10G base LX, uh, multi-mode, which is uh, 300 meters, maximum distance. 10G base LR, which is single mode, um, 10 kilometers. And 10G base E, which is single mode, that's 30 kilometers. Right. So it depends on the IEEE standard. Um, there can be used on different type of fiber and the distance varies. Alright, so here we're doing a comparison between um, fiber and uh, twisted pair. So, relative cost of cabling for, and this is uh, when you're purchasing it, you know, the cost of purchasing. For twisted pair, it's, it's low. If you're doing multi mode fiber, 
and we can say it's medium, single mode fiber, medium, the cost, the relative cost of our switch port. So when you say switch port now, it's basically saying if you buy a switch and then let's say it's a 12 port switch, then and you buy the switch for 12,000 then you just divide that by 12 and you since it's 12 ports and then you say is one thousand dollar per port right? that's basically what they're doing here you follow that reason yeah but we'll not try to catch that we'll never catch that first okay but you you, you follow it now i we'll follow it now yeah so um the per port cost for utp is low for multi-mode, it's medium, and single mode is high. The approximate distance, um, UTP is 100 meters, multi-mode, 500 meters, single mode, 40 kilometers. And these are distances that you can go um, without having need for um, trans amplification relative susceptibility to interference um twisted pair you'll have some right so you can have your cross dark you know, radio frequency interference you have electromagnetic interference um fiber whether multi-mode or single mode there are no interference yeah yeah and as i said the cost so the multi-mode is very high come if you're just, just a wire network you normally use for long distance you know yeah. Well, the single mode is for the longer distance. Oh, right, the multi, sorry, single mode. Yeah. Yeah, and the multi mode is uh, like you build a backbone like somewhere, you know? Yes. Relative risk of copying from cable, fiber, some. I want to say copying, you mean tapping into the cable. Right? Okay, okay. I was wondering what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 their language is a little different from what we are accustomed to. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, fiber is some, um, a multi mode none, um, um, single mode none. Uh, this, this, this is kind of changing. There has been some research that, that proved that you can actually collect information from the fiber. Um, we yeah. don't so the dollar look experience to bend the cup the fiber like and get some of the light like I escape the cladding. Right, right. So yeah. you don't have to actually break the fiber or tap into it at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean I, I, we understand why they say none, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but we know that technology now has gotten to the stage where we well, can actually do it. And unless you're with some big spy I'm gonna have some money out yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So commonly used Ethernet frame format. So um, and and this is for Ethernet, right? So now the part we are we are most accustomed to is start here destination, which is the destination MAC address, source MAC address, the type. Then the data and then the FCS, which is frame check sequence. This is what we are most accustomed to. But I want to start at the very left to the part where we don't see so often. And that's the preamble and the SFD, which is start of frame delimiter. Uh, so I want to start with these, right? Now, yeah. these are, when it comes to the receiving they are, they, are, they, are, they are transmitted right from the transmitting device, but at the receiving device, the receiving device usually discard these things, they don't keep them. So let's talk about what they really are. Um, on an on a Ethernet network, because there is no synchronization taking place, the, the receiving device don't know exactly when the transmitting device is going to be sending information. So they use these two things to help the receiving device to prepare to receive the device, to receive the, 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 the incoming transmission. So the way I um, usually explain it is like I think of a, of a race, right? like a 100 meter race. And um, 
then you would get the people on their mark then you say set where they now set themselves in the block and then the gun is fired which is the go so it's that kind of thing so the preamble is on your mark the starter frame delimiter is the set right so they, are, they set themselves in the block and then the destination address this is where we get to the go right go as in start collecting the data right so this preamble is uh, all it is is a series of one zero one zero one zero, so seven bits of one zero one zero one zero. And any time a receiving device sees this, it is a warning to say um, you should be receiving some information soon. Okay? Then what they do now is they change the encoding method for the last bit, this this bit number eight. And uh, when it when the receiving device sees it, it says you know. If you weren't ready, you have to get ready right now because the data is going to come next. Right? Make sense? Yes. What, what are the numbers stand for again? These numbers are the actual bits or, or bytes. Bytes, I should say. So seven bytes okay. of, of, of one zero, one byte of, of, of um, another set of one zero. And this okay. is six bytes of information for the MAC address, the destination MAC address. Six bytes for the source MAC address. Two bytes for the type. And then this is the data. The data can be 46 bytes minimum and 1,500 bytes maximum. And then over here, the FCS is for error checking which uh, is four bytes make sense yes yes all right so the quarter up to uh um, not not counting the preamble and the starter frame delimiter right the, and i and i don't count them because the receiving device don't collect them Okay, okay. Right. The receiving device just use them to determine when it should start collecting data. Okay. But it doesn't collect them. So just so we're starting now from the destination MAC address and going down to the frame check sequence. The total size is one thousand five hundred and eighteen. That that? Yeah, yes, I do. Okay. All right. So, um, and they are explained here, but I just went through them already. So, I'm going to okay. skip this slide. Um, okay. Structure of unicast Ethernet frame. So, with, with um, when in IP version 4, we can have different types of traffic, of, of, um, of, of, data right we can have um, unicast multicast and broadcast now the the addresses that are used as in the MAC addresses vary depending on whether it's a unicast multicast or broadcast so here we're looking at what the address would look like if we're sending a unicast traffic now the, the 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 MAC address is, is is what we call the Ethernet address. The MAC address is 48 bits, right? and that is how we get six bytes. Right? That's 48 bits, and remember, eight bits make a byte, right? Yes. So if we divide 48 by eight, we actually get six. So so the MAC address is divided into two, three bytes on the left and three bytes on the right. The three bytes on the left are called the organizational unique identifier. The three bytes on the right are called the vendor assigned address. The, the organizational unique identifier is assigned by the IEEE. 
So the IEEE gives organizations these numbers. Well, I shouldn't even say give because organizations have to pay for them. So companies that make or use network cards um, pay for these ad addresses from the IEEE. Now, the IEEE has a certain um, standard how they, they, they work out these addresses. Right? So it's three bytes, so that's why we have 24 bits. Um, the, it's always written in hexadecimal. So um, when we look at our MAC address, we usually see hexadecimal. Right? You would have seen that, right? Yes, yes. Right. And then, so let me give an example here. So 00602F. And then on the right side, the same thing. Um, 24 bits, which is six hexadecimal characters and an example 3A07BC alright now I see we are one, one minute past five so we're just going to break here um, for the evening um, and then so next week now we pick up um, what I'm going to do because so make sure we kind of keep on track. Next week, uh, we're not going to do any of these. We're going to skip these. So these are for you to go through. We're just going to go to uh, module two next week and start with those inside there. So so for this week now, what I what I want you to do is to go to the course here. And you're going to go to to your lessons. Mm -hmm. And you now need to cover up to chapter eight. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a rough thing, but if you're going to keep on track, yeah, that's, right. that's what you're going to have to do. Yeah. And these slides will just cover, reach up to here? Um, I think we'll just go to, to um, number two, chapter okay. two. Yeah, just chapter two. Okay. Right. So, I mean, if we start one o'clock, then we can go further. I, I know yeah, today yeah. kind of different because uh, you were running late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let me go ahead and stop the recording here.